I kveld er professor i psykologi fra Harvard. En superstjerne i den akademiske verden for sine oppsiktsvekkende teorier om hvorfor vi tenker og snakker som vi gjør. I sine seneste studier hevder han at vi mennesker aldri har vært fredeligere enn vi er i dag. Dette må vi høre mer om. Please welcome Steven Pinker. Welcome to, to Scandinavia. Thank you. Um, your latest theory is that violence is declining. Violence, it, it's declined on many scales of time and magnitude from world wars to the treatment of children. I'll give you some examples. Uh, homicide statistics go back in Europe for 800 years. And if you plot it on a graph, it goes down like that. Uh, a contemporary European has one-fiftieth the chance of being murdered as a medieval European. Uh, certain practices have been abolished, like human sacrifice, throwing a virgin into a volcano to improve the weather, legalized <laughs> slavery, debtor's prisons, uh, hanging people for shoplifting, uh, brutal torture executions, like burning someone at the stake or sawing him in half or pulling him apart by horses. Uh, more recently, there's been a, a decline in war. Uh, contrary to what you might think from the newspapers, the rate of death in warfare is at maybe at an all-time low. And even on smaller scales, uh, the treatment of uh, children has changed, so the children are no longer routinely uh, spanked and rates of child abuse are down. Uh, and we spoke before about feminism. One of the great accomplishments of feminism has been to put rape on the agenda as a crime, including marital rape, and rates of rape are way down, and domestic abuse. It used to be that husbands would beat, beat wives as a normal part of marriage. Now it's a crime, and rates of domestic violence have gone down. Are you talking mostly about the Western world, about our part of the world? Well, uh, the, the data are best for the West, and there are certain practices that were eliminated first in the West, and then it spread to the, to the rest of the world. Uh, it, the West is now more peaceful, on average, than the rest of the world, but it is a phenomenon that is now global. So rates of war uh, across the entire world have claimed fewer lives. But you are, uh, in, in this research, you are counting in the great wars, the, and Hitler, and Stalin, and, and Pol Pot, and uh, Rwanda, and Syria today. Th this is counted in? Yes, yeah, so the, and there's a big difference between Syria today, which is 6,000 deaths, and, say, uh, the Second World War with 50 million deaths. So the, there's no question that uh, the first half of the 20th century saw some horrific violence. But earlier centuries saw some pretty terrible violence as well, the Mongol invasions, the Crusades, the European Wars of Religion, the Napoleonic Wars. Uh, and what's interesting about the 20th century is that the second half was such a dramatic contrast to the first. Every, all the experts predicted in the 50s, 60s, 70s that World War I, 15 million deaths, World War II, 50 million. Well, World War III is inevitable, and that's going to be even more deaths because it's going to be a nuclear war between the U.S. and the Soviet Union. That didn't happen, and World War II was something more like a last gasp than a prediction of things to come. But we, we still torture people, don't we? Well, there's no comparison in the, the amount of torture. Now, torture is, when it comes to light, it is a scandal. The perpetrators are, uh, are punished. It's a deep embarrassment to the country. It used to be that torture was a form of, of entertainment. You'd bring out the whole family to watch the uh, prisoner struggle and scream as he was burned to death or uh, slowly hanged or beaten or broken on the wheel. Uh, and it was done all over the world. It was done for minor crimes uh, as a form of punishment. Now it's done sometimes to intimidate political opponents or to extract uh, information. But it's no longer done as an official uh, approved form of punishment. So what you are really talking about is the end of sadism. Why has this changed? Aren't we sadists by nature? I don't think we're sadists by nature. I do think we have a number of violent impulses and maybe a little bit of sadism when it comes to our enemies. But the kind of sadism where you would enjoy watching a cat being burned to death, I think is an acquired taste. Uh, <laughs> because for mo most of us, we pay a lot of money not to watch a cat be burned to death. But at that time, it was a form of, uh, of good, clean fun. I, I think that sadism is a bit like um, 
bungee jumping or uh, enjoying strong cheese or saunas. <laughs> where there, I think we initially have a reaction against it. I don't think we like to watch people in pain. But if you can overcome that, uh, the, uh, the displeasure turns to enjoyment, which can eventually turn to craving and addiction, which is what happens in serial killers and, uh, and other sadist sickos. Do you, so, yeah. I was just going to ask, do you think yes. it's that, like, way back when humans were invented, everyone was evil? And we've just gradually got less and less evil until it's the point now where we're sitting around and having a lovely conversation. Talking I mean, about politeness. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. No, I don't think everyone was evil, but I think that um, uh, people were more likely to act on certain impulses that we're much more likely to control today. Uh, thanks to the fact that we have, for example, governments that protect us against each other, which means that we don't have to worry about being so tough that we can uh, deter our enemies if we know that the state will do it for us. Because we are better educated, we're more cosmopolitan, we, we read about the experience of other people and we know that they have pleasures and pains as well and we take their point of view and we're less likely to um, uh, enjoy watching them suffer. I think it's because we apply our, our, uh, our sense of reason. We, we see violence as a problem to be solved as opposed to a contest that has to be won. So we step back and we think, how can I avoid violence and get my enemy to avoid violence at the same time? When you look back at the degree of violence, uh, like 400 years ago or, or 700 years ago, uh, how do you find the statistics? I mean, how do you know? Yeah. In, uh, for, say, up to 800 years ago, the homicide statistics are, are not bad. Uh, uh, the king... Uh, would insist that records be kept because the uh, assets of the perpetrator would go to the king. So he had a, a real, an incentive to, uh, for towns to keep good records. That's why the person who investigates crimes is called the coroner. He's a representative of the crown who wanted to make sure that he could confiscate the assets of the, the perpetrators. And also, people, people care about murder. It's hard to argue away a dead body, and it's always fascinating. And so people kept pretty good records of it. And you know that the chance of being exposed to violence in those times were much, much bigger than today. Yes, uh, prehistoric remains uh, have uh, about 15% of them show signs of violent trauma. That's a really high rate of violence. Medieval times, about 30 times uh, more violent than today. You mentioned that it's... women's liberation has mm -hmm. changed us. Well, I, in general, societies that give women more power tend to have less violence. Largely because violence is a guy thing. Uh, men commit the lion's share of violence, especially young men. If, and men are responsible for almost all of the stupid violence. So two men get into an argument over... Is there intelligent violence? <laughs> well, there, there can be calculated violence. Okay, that is, yeah. you do something, you eliminate someone to steal their land. That's uh, atrocious, but at least you can understand why yeah. they do it. Two men who fight over a parking space, and then one of them pulls out a gun and kills the other. Now, that's stupid violence. That's stupid, definitely. Men do that far <laughs> more often than women. And, and that happens not just over parking spaces, but over wars. Mm -hmm. There are stupid wars, and I think those are much more likely to be uh, waged by men than, than by women. Not that women leaders don't wage wars. They're uh, playing in a game whose rules are set by other men. They can't afford to be the only pacifist in a world for, full of warriors. So I think when it's in the interests of a woman to commit violence, she will do so. But these contests over uh, becoming the alpha, dominance, pride, honor, all of that stuff, that's much more of a guy thing. Uh, Steven Pinker, it's a, it's a great pleasure to have you here, and thank you so much for coming. Well, thanks for having me. Thank you so much, all of you. Um, om en uke så får vi besök av den försvunna